Welcome to our channel for a roller coaster of a story. It all starts with a seemingly ordinary family vacation, but who could have guessed it would lead to a heart pounding encounter involving gang violence and gunfire? But wait, there's more. Discover how this family's journey takes an unexpected turn, leaving you on the edge of your seat, eager to know the full story of survival and resilience. Stay tuned until the end. The Robinson family embarked on a fun tour to Florida and was experiencing an incredible time. For this family, Florida was a location of breathtaking beauty and amazement despite the continuous bad news about it. Holly had snapped a hundred pictures with their favorite Disney character, Mickey and Minnie Mouse, during their previous visit to Walt Disney World in Orlando. The Robinsons have had the ideal holiday. The United States has surpassed their expectations. They know that some areas of Florida might be dangerous for visitors at night. A gang shot a West Yorkshire couple while they were on holiday. This tragedy occurred in 1993 and now British people have begun to reconsider taking vacations in the US. But the Robinsons have been told that things are much safer in the US now and they should have no problems as long as they stay out of a few no-go regions in Florida. Ta-da! Holly remarks, mockingly bringing up her father's beer breath from the local Irish pub. It will come back to hunt him, but not anytime soon. The Robinsons are unaware that a gang conflict between the Crips and Zoe Pound, a group of Haitian immigrants, is taking place on Ocean Drive. Drug dealing disputes arise despite the general safety of tourist destinations, resulting in violent incidents in busy areas. As things get tense, shots are fired, resulting in chaos as many run for safety. Distant emergency sirens sound, indicating a sudden change in the course of events. One minute before the shots, the Robinsons believed Florida was safe for tourists. They had no idea that a gang dispute between the Crips and Zoe Pound was intensifying on Ocean Drive. Tourist destinations avoided much of the recent violence. The dispute was over drug dealing turf in popular nightclubs. The two gangs scheduled a meeting in a busy, seemingly safe location during the day in an effort to settle their differences. Tensions immediately skyrocketed due to a lack of dialogue skills. A Zoe Pound member felt insulted, leading to rapid escalation and gunfire within seconds. Screams erupt down Ocean Drive in the first minute as people run for safety. Wounded gang members lie on the street and distant sirens suggest help is on the way. Unaware of his own injuries, James Robinson calls for an ambulance in the second minute while holding his hurt daughter. He expresses deep regrets over Holy's condition and notices his wife Jessica is on the ground, conscious but in pain. In the third minute, it is clear that James had no prior knowledge about the alarming U.S. firearm violence statistics before their Florida trip. In 2021, a record high of approximately 21,000 gun-related deaths occurred, the highest since 1994. James didn't know the USA tops the list for heavily armed residents globally, contributing to over 100 unintentional shooting deaths annually. The same weekend that James' tragic tragedy occurred, 17 people nationwide lost their lives to weapons, despite James' friends' claims of greater safety. James notices that he has also been hurt in the fourth minute, realizing it as the police and ambulance respond. His pain, which is still minimal, is due to shock and the location of the gunshot. But Jessica, who was shot in the abdomen, is in a dangerous scenario. She has no idea that the high-velocity bullet has injured his peritoneum, causing leakage of stomach contents. This could be fatal because it can result in peritonitis. The gravity of the situation hits hard in the fifth minute as James pleads for Holy to open her eyes, his heartache evident, desperately awaiting the ambulance in a race against time. The reason for Jessica's deteriorating health is that her blood flow is decreased, which lowers her red blood cell count. In the sixth minute, paramedics respond to the casualties quickly and call for additional assistance as the ambulance and police arrive. The harsh reality of survival stats is based on where you get hit, with a close-up look at Holy's tough journey after taking a bullet to the head. Holy's critical condition is described in the seventh minute as paramedics carefully place her in the ambulance. Paramedics search Holy's head for any more wounds, but they discover no exit wound, suggesting that the bullet is still inside her skull. Having a bullet stuck in the body creates a difficult situation. The chances of survival reduce to 42% if the bullet enters the brain. 
with the shot not being on the side of her head, Holy's situation is a little more promising. While concentrating on keeping Holy alive, the paramedics were also looking for more injuries. Jessica's condition inside the ambulance is shown at the eighth minute. Concerned about internal bleeding, paramedics touch her swollen tummy. They note that Jessica is conscious but in agony and they record any possible gastrointestinal spills and bleeding. Shallow breathing prompts airway opening and oxygen administration. The focus switches to cleansing the wound, giving fluids and antibiotics, and limiting external bleeding. Withholding painkillers help to guarantee a precise diagnosis. James, seemingly the most fortunate for now, wishes it were him facing the worst rather than his wife and daughter. He doesn't feel any pain because the bullet left a clean entry and exit hole in his leg. Luckily, there is no injury to the major veins, nerves, or bones. After the paramedics close his wound, he will get a full examination, antibiotics, and surgical debridement, a procedure that cleans the wound and removes any dead tissue at the hospital. Due to the possibility of bullets shattering into splinters, scans will be performed to make sure no gunshot pieces remain inside. James is anticipated to make a full recovery, which is not often the case for people shot. The situation is described as turning into a crime scene into the 18th minute and the police are following tight regulations to preserve it. Police adhere to stringent procedures, which include securing the area to prevent contamination, documenting information, and keeping an eye out for threats. In order to preserve the integrity of the spot, interviews with witnesses are conducted while allowing medical staff to work. Due to the fact that this was a broad daylight mass shooting involving tourists, the case is expected to draw global attention, placing pressure on the police. Attempts to gather information from a gang member receive a hostile response. The police secure and separate individuals nearby, following the principle of identify, establish, protect, and secure. Patrol cars look for possible shooters and take into account escape routes. The cops take great care to record objects at the crime site and men being carried into ambulances. Detectives arrive at the scene and briefed by the first responders in the 21st minute. They choose to contact forensic specialists, attorneys, and people with specialized equipment. They get IDs from everyone in the area and they gather photos and videos taken since the incident began. Detectives take their own photos during walkthroughs, making sure that no evidence is tampered with and highlighting how crucial it is to preserve the integrity of the crime scene. Detectives will be removing evidence soon, and in order to avoid cross-contamination, they will meticulously preserve, package, and transport it. The evidence will be sent to either an evidence storage facility or a crime laboratory. Describes Jessica's health condition during the 25th minute. The physician determines that the patient has stomach bullet-related peritonitis based on an abdominal ultrasound and ocular assessment. Because of possible organ damage, more examinations are required. There is a genuine risk that sepsis, a severe body reaction to infection leading to organ failure and death, may develop from her peritonitis. It is noted that abdominal sepsis is very serious, with a death rate of 72%. Only 30% of hospital releases make it through the year. Jessica is given a large dosage of intravenous antibiotics to prevent sepsis. The results of Jessica's scans are discussed near the 45-minute mark. Given the circumstances, the bullet did not damage Jessica's internal organs. However, she still needs surgery to have the bullet removed and the internal hole fixed. Holy's health deteriorates in the meantime. 90 minutes in, detectives carry out a second walkthrough, which is sometimes referred to as a final survey. A thorough case file containing all of the acquired evidence as well as expert technical and forensic reports will be compiled. The completeness and accuracy of such files are crucial as they can impact the success of solving crimes. In some instances, insufficient or contaminated evidence has allowed guilty individuals to escape justice while innocent ones may be wrongly convicted. Jessica was responding well to antibiotics on day two, and she was able to sit up and speak in bed while managing pain with morphine. James updated on Holy, now in a coma post-surgery to remove the bullet. The induced coma is like hitting pause. It eases the body's needs, reduces swelling, and gives Holy a fighting chance. Holy's survival is highlighted as miraculous given the usual outcomes of head injuries. 
On day 15, Holy faced challenges with missing elements and poor vision, a result of damage to the right hemisphere of her brain. Doctors describe her situation as a best-case scenario for brain injuries, detailing spatial awareness issues, memory problems, confusion, and difficulty interpreting emotions. Fortunately, the worst damage is limited to these issues, along with some weakness in her left arm and hand. In their Clack Heaton household on day 365, Jessica asks Holy if she's done for homework. Holy answers with a smile, acknowledging that she is still not fully normal but is getting better thanks to therapy.